How's it going people? Many bad things came from the noughties, the financial crisis and Windows Vista for example. However, when it comes to supercars, it appears the opposite is true. Between 2000 and 2009, numerous incredible supercars hit the market, making the mouths water of those of us who were teenagers at the time and destabilizing the bank accounts of wealthy people just in time for the crash. In this video, I'm going to talk you through the cars I believe to be the most iconic supercars that were released in the 2000s. I'm defining iconic as cars that remain very famous or popular, especially being considered to represent a particular time, which is in line with the Cambridge Dictionary definition. Therefore, the cars in this list act as ambassadors for supercars in the 2000s and remain both well-known and well-loved to this day. To work out which cars are most iconic, I've hence looked at how relevant they've remained on the internet. To do this, I use Google Trends to see which of the five cars was most searched in the last 12 months on Google, YouTube, Image and news, which provided a good basis for which cars were most to least relevant. From this I was able to place the cars into their positions. I did also look at their actual influence in popular culture such as on TV and films and music videos or in games, but I thought it was a little bit too relative so I decided to leave the overall results to be based on actual popularity of the cars on the internet today. This hopefully makes my top 5 less biased on my end as I didn't personally order them at 1 to 5. I know that Google Trends can't tell us everything we need to know about how iconic these supercars really are and icons for every individual person will be different different, but regardless, I'll give you some facts, figures and interesting information about each of the cars and you can let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with my picks. If you enjoy the video, remember to like and subscribe for more weekly car content, but anyway, without further ado, let's get into the video. Starting us off at number 5 we have the record breaking Koenigsegg CCX, which probably falls more under the remit of hypercar than supercar. Either way, its incredible speed, power and overall performance has cemented the CCX as an iconic beast that laid the foundations for newer eggs like the Agera, 1 to 1 and the Regera. This triumph of engineering has a ridiculous twin supercharged 4.7 litre V8 that provides the rear wheels with 806 horses, taking it from 0 to 60 in 3.2 seconds and to a top speed of 245 miles per hour. It's absolutely staggering what this car can achieve. After the original CCX was released in 2006, it was followed by numerous limited edition models like the CCXR, which produces 1006 brake horsepower when run on ethanol fuel, the Editions, which are more track focused, and the CCXR Trevita, which has a particularly elaborate exposed diamond carbon fibre weave, and only two were created. This is particularly interesting as Trevita is an abbreviation of three whites in Swedish, because originally there were supposed to be three Trevitas, but the complexity of actually making the diamond weave body forced Koenigsegg to produce just two of them. CCX actually stands for Competition Coupe X, with the X relating to the 10th anniversary of the first Koenigsegg CC car being tested in 1996. Though it's consistently the lowest scoring on this list in terms of its interest online, this car still thoroughly deserves its status as an icon because of its incredible accuracy. It was briefly the fastest car on the Top Gear test track after the Stig originally crashed the car in his first attempt. If that doesn't give the car legend status, I really don't know what does. It also held the Top Gear track high speed record, as well as the Nürburgring's high speed record. And as if that wasn't enough, it held the record for 0 to 300 and back to 0 km per hour, alongside the 0 to 200 km per hour record, just 9.3 seconds. For perspective, it takes my Polo around 18 seconds to do 0 to 100 km per hour, and I don't think it can actually reach 200 km per hour. It was also named among the top 10 most beautiful cars by Forbes magazine, which is definitely deserved. Look at the way the car pulls apart, with the full rear shell lifting to show the engine, as well as the ridiculously cool doors. It's actually a sublimely good looking vehicle. I think what really cemented this car as an icon is the fact that it took the fight for top speed to the Bugatti Veyron. It never came out on top, but I remember everyone at school who liked cars would either be Team Veyron or Team CCX. I think I personally would go for the CCX if you offered me the option of either today, just simply because only 49 of them exist, and I'd have to have one of the Trevitas. What a priceless piece of machinery that would be. In terms of popular culture, the car has appeared in numerous films and TV shows like The Apprentice, Redline, Apex, Fast Five and Jay Leno's Garage. A lookalike of the CCX also appears in the popular game GTA V, renamed to be the Swedish Overflood Entity XF, and you can clearly see the similarities between this and the real thing. I think the CCX really embodies a key feature in the noughties that makes it such an icon, the opportunity for newer brands to challenge the status quo brands like Ferraris and Lamborghinis. Despite there only being 49 CCXs, the car helped the brand really cement itself as a challenge to the more established supercar manufacturers and has a special place in the hearts of many motoring enthusiasts, myself included. For this reason, I would 100% call this car an icon and it very much deserves its place on this list. In fourth place we have one of my favourite cars of all time, the legendary Porsche Carrera GT that was released in 2003. 612 brake horsepower, rear wheel drive, 3.5 seconds 0 to 60 and 205 miles per hour from that unbelievably iconic sounding 5.7 litre V10. Just listen to this. <laughs> I think 
that sound speaks for itself. The motive behind that noise is a very interesting history of its own. Originally, it was created in secret by Porsche for the Footwork Formula 1 team in 1992, but was never actually used in F1. The engine was repurposed for a Le Mans prototype in 1999 following rule changes in 98. This prototype was cancelled to focus on the new KN SUV. This ultimately turned out to be an instrumental decision in the creation of the GT, as the money that the KN brought in helped Porsche pay for the Carrera GT project. This is where the engine from that 99 Le Mans prototype was used. So when you drive a Carrera GT, remember to pay respects to the KN, and enjoy the fact that your car has an engine originally meant for F1 and then Le Mans. The Carrera GT has a whole host of other incredible features that make it a particularly special vehicle. Some of the interesting features include the pure carbon fibre monocoque, which is reminiscent of F1 cars and the first of its kind in a road car, the blue and red wheel nuts that denote which side of the car the wheel is supposed to be on, the birch and ash shifter that pays homage to the 917, which originally used wooden shifters to stop drivers' hands from burning on metal knobs, and the fact that the car has an auto to throttle aid features to stop people from stalling the car. The Carrera received incredible reviews from car journalists, with Sports Car International naming it number one on its list of top sports cars of the 2000s, and eighth on the top sports cars of all time, while Popular Science magazine gave it the Best of What's New award for 2003 because of the Formula 1 tech used in the car. It also features pretty regularly in popular culture as it has appeared in The Simpsons, White Collar, Red Line and 2012, as well as music videos by Justin Timberlake, P Diddy and Juicy J. It has also appeared in numerous games including one of my all-time favourites, Burnout 3 Takedown. A number of celebrities have also owned the car, and it's famously the car in which Paul Walker tragically died. Though Porsche originally planned on making 1,500 GTs, they stopped at 1,270 due to airbag regulations in the US. This makes the GT pretty limited and prices tend to be in excess of £650,000. For me, this car is an absolute goal, a real car enthusiast vehicle, which helped revolutionise the idea that F1 and LMP1 technology could be used in a road car, thus paving the way for future cars like the 918 or the Mercedes Project 1. All that said, the Carrera GT is one of the most incredible cars ever made in my opinion. Let alone one of the most iconic supercars of the 2000s, and I would almost certainly have one over a 918 given the opportunity. The battle for second and third is close, but in third place is not just my favourite car on this list, but one of my favourite cars of all time, the Enzo Ferrari. Produced between 2002 and 2004, the Enzo has a 6 litre V12 engine that puts out 660 brake horsepower, taking it from 0 to 60 in 3.3 seconds, with a top speed of 221 miles per hour. This rear wheel drive monster is often called the Ferrari Enzo, though its official title is Enzo Ferrari, which is actually the name of the company's founder. If being named after the founder of the company doesn't make a car iconic enough for you, I really don't know what does. Like the Carrera GT, the Enzo uses Formula 1 technology from the period, like the carbon fibre body, electrohydraulic shift transmission, and carbon fibre reinforced silicon carbide ceramic composite brakes. That was an absolute mouthful to get through and took me numerous attempts. Please like the video now. It also had tech that was not even allowed in F1, like Active Aero. The base of the Enzo has been quite instrumental in other Maranello cars, for example the Ferrari FXX was an evolution of the technology that was used in the Enzo, as well as the Maserati MT12 which was created so that Maserati could enter the FIA GT Championship. The history of the 400 Enzos that were produced is quite interesting. The first 399 were produced for Ferrari customers, which includes celebrities like Nicolas Cage, Eric Clapton, Joe Cole, Tommy Hilfiger, JK, Kimi Raikkonen, Michael Schumacher, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, and many others. The 400th Enzo was built specially as a gift for Pope John Paul II. However, when Ferrari took the car to the Pope, he suggested they should sell it and donate the proceeds to the victims of a tsunami that ravaged parts of Southeast Asia a few weeks before. So Ferrari auctioned the car off at their Maranello facility, and 100% of the proceeds went to charity. It was a particularly special Enzo, with Rosso Scuderia paint, which is normally withheld for Ferrari race cars and only a select few Enzos are finished in it, like the one created for Michael Schumacher. It also featured a one-off exposed carbon fibre rear spoiler. The car actually sold again in 2015 for over $6 million, with only 179 kilometres on the clock. This is the type of Ferrari that will likely be worth 250 GTO numbers in the not too distant future. The Enzo Ferrari has often been regarded as one of the best Ferraris of all time, as suggested by magazines like Motor Trend Classic and Sports Car International. It appears in Charlie's Angels, South Park, Twice in Family Guy, Fast 6, Mission Impossible and even Arthur on CBBC. Need for Speed, Burnout, Forza and GT Sport have also included the car, with GTA 5 including another car directly inspired by the Enzo named the Grotti Cheetah. Overall, the Enzo remains one of the most iconic supercars from the noughties, and for me, it's one of the best cars of all time.
Narrowly taking second place away from the Enzo is the Lamborghini Murcielago, and more specifically, the well-loved LP640 model. A little known fact is that the LP stands for Longitudinale Posteriore, which means the 6.5 litre V12 sits longitudinally behind the driver, and the 640 stands for the brake horsepower of the car. This all-wheel drive Lambo does 0-60 in just 3.2 seconds, and has a top speed of 210 miles per hour, selling at prices of well over 200 grand for a good LP640 model. As with other Lamborghinis, the Murcielago is named after a fighting bull, though Murcielago is particularly revered as it was said to have survived 24 sword strokes in a bullfight in Spain in 1879. The bull was such a strong and hearty fighter that the Matador actually decided to let it live, and it was then supposedly presented as a gift to Don Antonio Miura, who was a well-known breeder, so Murcielago the bull went on to father the famous Miura line of fighting bulls. Again, another pretty iconic name for this unreal Lambo, which also kind of looks like it's been slashed by a sword 20 24 times, with all its different lines and vents. Though the original Murcielago was produced from 2001, the LP640 was introduced in 2006 with updated aesthetics and performance. One noticeable feature of the Murcielago is the asymmetrical vents that pop out of the sides, which I think is one of the most menacing and iconic features on any car to this day. There are also numerous limited edition LP640s, but the one I would love to own personally is the Versace edition. Only 20 were produced, and they were only made available in black or white. Though the exterior of the car is the same as the original, stylists from Versace helped design the interiors, which are finished with a Versace logo on the centre console. The car also came with matching Versace luggage, alongside driving shoes and gloves. Imagine how swaggy that would be to own. What makes this Lambo particularly iconic is its appearances in popular culture. It is definitely one of the most recognisable cars from the noughties, considering how many TV shows, music videos, films and games it's appeared in. For example, The Dark Knight, The Mentalist, The Dictator, Ken Block's Jim Carner 6, Ride Along 2 and 22 Jump Street all have the Lambo in it. Again, GTA 5 has a car inspired by the Lambo 2, the Infernus, which looks particularly similar from the front. Funnily enough, in Kanye West's music video for Mercy, the Lambo in the background is actually a Gallardo, because time constraints didn't allow for Kanye to get a hold of a Mercer Largo in time. Maybe that's why the Lambo stays so far in the background and is only in the video for a short length of time. In addition to this, a whole host of celebs own the Mercy, including 50 Cent and Sean White, but most recently, Paul Wallace or Supercars of London collected one just the other week. Major congrats to him on getting his dream car. With this incredibly large influence in popular culture, and continued relevance even through to today, the Lamborghini Murcielago remains an icon from the noughties due to its menacing looks and a reminder that Lamborghini do actually make cars for the love of insanity. Finally, at number one by a country mile, the most iconic supercar from the 2000s, the Bugatti Veyron. Prepare yourself for these specs. The all-wheel drive Veyron has an 8-litre W16 engine with four turbochargers. What in the actual world is this car? This ridiculous engine takes the car from 0 to 60 in 2.5 seconds and to a top speed of 254 miles per hour. This is a car that broke the boundaries of what was considered possible for vehicles, with people around the car community hailing its overall technological magnificence. Jeremy Clarkson actually stated it was a car that just rewrote the rulebook really, an amazing piece of engineering, a genuine Concorde moment, thus placing the car on a level with the Concorde, a supersonic passenger plane considered to be the pinnacle of engineering at the time, and an icon in its own right. The bug was named after the famous French racing driver, Bugatti engineer and Le Mans winner, Pierre Veyron, and just 450 were produced in total across all versions. These include the Supersport, Grand Sport and Grand Sport Vitesse, though the latter was not actually created in the 2000s. My personal favourite is one I had the honour of seeing in person at Chateau Impney earlier this year, the Supersport World Record Edition, which comes in exposed carbon fibre with orange detailing. An insane car to see in person. There is nothing quite like a Veyron, especially when there are only five of those Veyrons in existence. One thing that makes the Veyron such an icon is its top speed. Most car enthusiasts will know of the mythical 267.8 mph record set by the Veyron Supersport. However, if you're looking to buy one of your own, you'll only ever be able to do 258 miles per hour in it, as the car has been limited to stop the tyres from disintegrating. What a shame. Speaking of the tyres, the Veyron runs on special Michelin Pax run flat tyres that accommodate the car's top speed and cost around $25,000 per set, plus a further $70,000 to have them mounted onto the wheels in France, which is theoretically the only place that provides this service. Let's not forget that to buy one now, you'll have to part with at least £1.2 million, so already you can see that this car is all about money. This leads me to my next point. The Veyron has become an icon for, and representation of, wealth. Only the wealthiest can own a bug, and only the wealthiest do. Simon Cowell, Jay Leno, Cristiano Ronaldo, Tom Brady, Jay-Z, and of course, 
Floyd Mayweather. This is actually quite ironic, considering VW actually made a loss on Veyrons in total, as each car cost around £5 million to produce, and the average sale price was £1.7 million. It has appeared in numerous music videos by artists like Lil Wayne, Birdman, Beyonce, Flo Rida, Tiger and Ace Hood, as well as films like Fast 7, The Green Hornet, Transformers and Mission Impossible. In his book titled Bugatti Veyron A Quest for Perfection, The Story of the Greatest Car in the World, Martin Roach actually makes the point that the Veyron has become so famous that it is a celebrity in and of itself, and I would have to agree with him just looking at the stats. The Veyron had an incredible send-off with the 450th model to leave the factory being titled La Finale. A special one-off edition, estimates suggest La Finale sold for more than $3 million. It has exposed carbon fibre in crimson and black, maroon and cream seats with La Finale stitched into the headrest, and La Finale on the front and rear of the car. It also has the classic Bugatti Elephant logo used throughout the car. What an incredible thing to own. I could go on forever about how unbelievable the Veyron is, but for the sake of getting the video over and done with, I'll end it here. The iconic supercar of the 2000s, the Bugatti Veyron. No big outro today. If you enjoyed the video, remember to like, comment and subscribe for more videos like this. I wanted to say a huge thank you for all of the support recently and a big welcome to all the new subscribers. I just hit 2000 and the growth is just continuing to amaze me. As always, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Listen.